Hello, we are Julia and Anastasia, two sisters who have moved home to our family's organic and regenerative fruit farm. We are learning to farm, build, garden and care for the animals and land. Sixty years ago, our grandparents immigrated here and planted so many tropical fruit trees, beginning the immense food forest that we live in today. After this, our parents took over, and now it is our turn to plant and care for this large system of trees and shrubs and gardens that have fed our family for generations. Today we are taking a rainy tour across the farm, foraging from the trees and reflecting on this great legacy. Join us. This is the black sapote tree. Some people call it chocolate pudding fruit because it tastes so sweet and chocolatey. In this paddock, we have a few fruit trees. Black sapote, carambola star fruit, avocados, tamarillos, limes, lemons, and oranges. But we plan to plant way more. Then this could be an orchard where the ducks eat the pests and the fallen fruit. The sheep often get into this paddock and eat the entire bottoms of trees. Oops. This avocado tree has a definite suspiciously sheep-shaped hole. But the avos are beginning to fruit. They are so cute and tiny at this stage. It's starting to rain, but Julia wants to harvest some tea. Lemon myrtle is Australian bush tucker. It grows in subtropic rainforests like this, and it tastes like citrus. The Thai basil dries purple and has the brightest colour as a tea. The mango flowers have just started to fruit. But because there has been rain when they are so small, a lot have got knocked off, so we might not have that many mangoes this year. Underneath the mango and custard apple trees, black sapote and persimmon the sheep hang out. Their whole family are named after fruit from the farm, because they are all cheeky fruit lovers who eat all the bottoms of all the trees. But I have to admit they are such key members of the management of the farm. They eat the grass and weeds around the trees, regenerating the land. They eat the fallen fruit so that no fruit flies get drawn in. And they fertilize the soil with their droppings. Although it's hard to get anything done when these guys want ear scratches all the time. Pluto and Picasso eat any fallen fruit from the mulberry tree, if Julia doesn't get there first. Picasso loves mulberries so much that he always escapes into the other paddock to get more. It's been too wet, so our papayas have gone mouldy. Minestrone, Mr. Tony, Chaos, Pavlova, Dill, Sheriff, and Tiny Trev love mulberries also. They often escape into Pluto and Picasso's side of the paddock to eat all the ones they've forgotten. 
These guys are also such an integral part of our food forest. Behind their night pen and highly fertilized by their poo are macadamia and banana trees. Sadly, the parrots ate all of the bananas, but the macas are starting to fruit and will be ready in April. Macadamia is a native to our specific area in Australia. This is my favorite mango tree. It's the stringy variety, and in the summer it's normally covered in so many fruit that I end up eating one each time I walk past. This is a Monsteria deliciosa vine. It's super common as a houseplant, but grows wildly here. Its fruit is super sweet and tangy and made of tiny adjoining hexagons. Yes, a banana with no trace of parrots. Down by the creek, the Brazilian cherries grow. There are so many at this time of year. This is my favorite avo tree. In the winter, it has so much fruit and in the summer, it is the best for climbing. It's been here forever. It fed our grandparents, our parents, and now us. The kiwi orchard is getting overgrown, so we need to prune them soon. It is the end of the season, so there aren't that many fruit remaining, and the flowers are already beginning to bloom for the next season. But the ones that are still here are ready to eat straight from the vine, and they taste so good. This is a male kiwi vine planted among the female vines, which is necessary for cross-pollination. The orchard was planted by our mum and dad 30 years ago. They cut posts from old salvaged bloodwood. This is an Indian fig tree. Until today, I thought they were an introduced species, but it turns out that they are also native to Australia. We are gonna to try to make a curry from them. Here is the big persimmon tree. Now we're heading over to the down wall, to the orchard on the other side. Okay, I take it back. This is my favorite mango tree. Sometimes the mangoes fill the branches right to the dam. So we always swim over and pluck them from the water or sit in the branches and watch over the dam while eating a fresh mango. Over the other side of the dam, there is a whole mango orchard. There are also jackfruit, which make the best pulled jackfruit chili. There are lychees. One summer we had so many that they were practically the only thing I ate for a month. And there are Davidson plums, which are an Australian native to our rainforests. And of course, my favorite on the go snack, Jabotacapa. There's only one ripe right now, and they're also the sheep's favorite go to snack. So we'll have to come back before they come and inhale them off the tree. 
We have sweet memories of our grandfather returning from the orchards with a full hat of Jabrita Carpers. It's getting super stormy, so time to go inside, but tomorrow we will bake from the ingredients from the farm. In the morning, the rain has cleared. Overnight, there were thunderstorms and a strike of lightning hit the ridge line that we look over to. Luckily, there was enough rain to put the fire that it caused out. The ducks are always so excited to see us. These guys just started laying, so it's super exciting each time we find an egg. One of them lays blue eggs, but we still haven't found out who. In the morning, they get so many cuddles, but Moth always gets jealous of all the attention. Pavlova the duck is named after the white, fluffy, sweet dessert because, well, she is white, fluffy, and sweet. So today we're going to make a pavlova. Time to process the black sapotes. We saved the leaves for the goats because they love them so much. Black sapotes take a while to ripen, so we're going to leave these ones. But we have one that we picked last week. When they are mixed, they go the yummiest chocolate pudding texture. The first step of a pavlova is to separate the eggs. Look at sweet young Nastosham in the background, sneaking some coriander while her mum isn't looking. Julia is going to dry some tea from lemon myrtle, mint and Thai basil, and make some from her previously dried Thai basil. We'll use the egg yolks to make a tapioca pudding later so that we don't waste them. We leave our eggshells out to dry in the sun. After, we give them back to the ducks as a bit of extra calcium. The next step is whizzing for ages until they are soft peaks. Then add some sugar slowly and then pour it onto a baking dish. I'm a pretty chaotic pavlova maker, so half the time they end up incredible and the other half they are super flat. But they always manage to be tasty. Yay, this one turned out pretty good. We're going to add black sapote mixed with coconut cream as a layer. <laughs> and then add some freshly picked fruit to the top.
Now it's time for tea and a picnic. Okay, so it's beginning to storm out there, so maybe an indoor picnic? We find these summer storms so exciting since last year the drought was so bad that it barely rained all year. After our indoor picnic and tea, rain has started to clear.